pine farmer over there, they've just uh, finished feeding the fish. Dad's on the rice field, he's sorting out uh, some channels. I suspect it hasn't been harvested because it's just too wet in there. Lots and lots of people asking about the house build. Uh, and uh, Pino at this point want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, contributed information, especially on the solar power and bits and pieces. It's been invaluable, uh, really, really grateful. I know next to nothing about uh, solar panel or solar power, and it's been quite a learning curve already, but the information that we've had through so far has been absolutely invaluable. So thank you very, very much. Now today what I thought I'd do is a Q&A type thing. Um, basically lots of people have asked me questions and given advice and uh, I thought it might be useful to sort of, you know, cover some of these. Now I've written all these down and uh, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Anyway, I'll try my best. Uh, Steve Hay says, uh, when you sleep in the shack, do you have any problems with bugs and snakes? Very good question. Uh, no, per se. Mosquitoes, that's about the only bugs that you get bitten by. Um, you know, you're always going to get them, but we generally sleep in the tent. Mum and Dad, when they sleep in the shack, they don't bother using the tent. It's too hot for them, but they have a mosquito net, so it keeps the mosquitoes out. As far as other bugs are concerned, no, you don't really get a problem. But on that note, I'm sure you can see the hole in one of the rafters. They're like bees that go in there and they bore in and uh, yeah, they do quite a bit of damage. So there's quite a lot of these holes. I did actually mention it to my father-in-law and he said that uh, he was going to treat it because uh, it's getting to a point now where there's way too many of them. As for snakes, um, I've said this before, I think snakes really are very misunderstood creatures. You'll find that uh, snakes, if you approach one, will do everything it possibly can to get out of your way. They really don't like any type of human contact at all. So no, generally no problem with snakes. Um, like any other wild animal, if you corner it, it will become aggressive. It will try and, you know, defend itself. But I've never really had a problem. Uh, a couple of times, you know, with cobras, uh, they tend to be highly aggressive. But again, if you just respect them and back off and give them their space, they'll just slither away and leave you alone. As far as the pond snakes here are concerned, they're non-venomous. And, uh, yeah, generally getting anywhere near one of them is, uh, you know, a bit of a nightmare, really. I've been trying my hardest. I've, a couple of times I've caught them on camera. But it's not easy at all. So I hope that uh, answers your question, Steve. OK KO asks, Hello, Pine and Graham. Maybe you can open up a homestay. I believe it would be successful. In the village that we live, uh, there's 10 of them, I think, and uh, they all sort of, you know, have a few sort of people stay. It's nothing massive, but, uh, yeah, it produces a little bit of an income with them. Uh, Pi and I did think about it, and uh, unless we could sort of build a separate unit, almost a self-contained unit, I don't think I'd be too keen on the idea. Um, I just like my privacy. And um, we could do it on a sort of, um, you know, a, a, an every now and again sort of basis. That might uh, be an idea. But uh, the third bedroom, as I explained to you before, that we're planning on building, really is for friends, family uh, to come and visit. So uh, we'll, we'll have visitors without, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, but I'm not quite sure that we would turn it into a business. Um, you know, that would be really up to pie, but I, I don't think uh, she'd be overly keen. But you never know, you know, watch this space. Um, it might turn out that uh, we, we do try something. Now, as you guys can see, uh, the shack is actually built up on uh, concrete pillars. Now, this type of thing is prevalent across Thailand. Uh, concrete is uh, the main sort of material they use for building. Although I have seen steel structures and that is becoming a little bit more popular. That leads me to uh, the next question from uh, Andrew Jeffrey. He said, think about uh, low cost steel. It's strong and it's quick and easy to build. You're absolutely right. Uh, I know a lot of uh, you have watched the video of me and dad. Now dad was actually in the construction industry. Uh, he was a steel worker. He was a project manager for steel structures. And uh, he's also said to me, look, you know, if you're gonna build, you know, try and go the steel route. It's a lot easier to uh, construct and it's a lot quicker. And he said, in some cases it can be a lot cheaper as well. So consider it. I've got to look into it. That's another aspect of this build that we may consider. And uh, I'm actually quite keen on it. Water, water everywhere. And not a drop to drink. Now that is an old uh, seafarer's uh, saying. Basically when they're at sea, of course, it's all salt water. So as far as the eye can see, it's all water, but you can't drink any of it. Now that aptly leads me on to the next question from uh, Duncan Bradford, who says, um, will you have to bore to get water? 
um, source, Graham. Also, um, assuming that the uh, septic tank for the uh, waste. We actually do have a well. You can see where the umbrella is. There's a well there, and it's 12 metres deep. The water there is used to uh, fill up the rice paddies and, of course, the ponds. We can use it for showering. Um, there is a system you can put in where it filters the water. Um, whether I'd trust it to be potable or not is another question. Currently, where we live, uh, the water is potable. And again, I don't trust that either, so I actually buy water in. It comes in sort of five-gallon sort of big bottles. And, um, yeah, it's fine. It's pretty cheap as well, 12 baht for five gallons. So I assume we'll be doing exactly the same here. As far as a septic tank is concerned, yes, we'll put in a septic tank. Uh, this is another issue at this point that I'm not overly sure on. Obviously, the septic tank will be used for, you know, um, toilet waste and, and such. And uh, then there's the issue of grey water, so we've got to cover that as well. Again, it's another aspect that we're going to have to cover when we come to asking the builder questions. The next question comes from Ian Weldale. Um, Ian said, um, you said that you don't like aircon and assume you'll be uh, cooking with uh, a gas bottle. Now, cooking here, um, you have a choice. You can have an electric cooker or a lot of people just have gas bottles. We have gas bottles at home, we have a gas cooker. It's just easier. The other thing, of course, um, you know, ele electricity up here sometimes goes out unexpectedly. We get power cuts all the time. So, uh, yeah, it's always nice to have a gas cooker because you've always got something to cook with. Ian went on to say that no real um, heavy-duty appliances to power then unless I'm missing something. There's a couple of things that we have at home at the moment, such as a microwave oven and a toaster, and I understand that they can be pretty juicy to uh, power. The other thing, of course, is a computer. We don't have things like printers and there's no freezer or anything like that. We have a fridge freezer, but it's, you know, it's, a, it's a sort of a reasonable size fridge, but a small freezer compartment. So they're the only really big things. Other things would be a water pump, um, shower, electric shower, uh, TV, I'm not sure whether we'll actually bother with a TV, to be honest. We have a TV at home, but Pi and I don't watch it. Uh, Mum and Dad use it for their soaps, and Fan watches it for a little bit. But Pi and I never do. We generally watch whatever we want on YouTube, um, on the computer. So, uh, yeah, I think that really the computer will just double up as a TV, to be honest with you. This next question comes from Leo Schwarzkopf. Now, Leo, uh, if I haven't pronounced your name correctly, your surname, I do apologise, sir. And I hope I have. Anyway, Leo asks, uh, do you have, uh, or can you have, any olive trees on the farm? And uh, the answer to that is yes, we do have some. And they're all in the duck pen. All these trees all the way along here are all uh, olive trees. They've actually bared fruit. Uh, I can't see any on there right now. And Dad did actually say to me that uh, they got harvested last year but I don't know whether they are the same as the European variety. So yes we have them but I'm not entirely sure if it's the same. The next question comes from uh, Jan Johansson uh, regarding uh, power and Jan says how far is it to the nearest uh, power point um, best check if it's possible to get cable to your location. Now to give you an idea you can see the processing plant over there that's the nearest main road it's approximately two kilometers. Now the power companies here, what they do is they don't generally bury cables underground. It's all power poles and lines. It's a bit unsightly, but that's the way it goes. And uh, if they were to uh, bring power onto the farm, it would mean having to cross several farmers' fields, which means they'd also have to uh, you know, make the acquisition of land. It's not gonna happen. It's just not cost effective to do so. So we're stuck with no power. Now, as you guys know, there's the farm tracks, and if you go down there, uh, about a couple of hundred meters, then you've got uh, the main farm road. There's no power along there either. There was talk last year that finally the local administration was gonna fix the road, in other words, resurface it all. And there was whispers that um, the uh, power company would install electric while they were at it. It didn't happen. Uh, there's talk again that they're going to do it this year. Whether they do or not, uh, of course, is anybody's guess. And, of course, um, whether they put power in or not, again, is anybody's guess at this point. We really don't know. Now, I'm sure you can see the big truck up there, and that's basically where the main road is. So even if they were to put power poles along the main road, it would still require several hundred metres to get here. It can be done, of course. I mean, it's just a case of manpower and uh, materials. But of course, uh, it could be extremely expensive, and I'm not sure the uh, power company would go to the expense. I'm not sure it'd be worth their while. But uh, there you go. So that's the situation. It's one of the reasons why we're planning to go completely off-grid. 
it's basically a no choice situation. A few people actually said, uh, is the plot going to be wide enough? And we have one question from Big Five, and he says, Graham, how do you anticipate building a house on that narrow strip of land without backfilling the land? Good question. From where the, the land drops off just there to the bank to, uh, to here is seven metres. The footprint of the building we estimate at this point to be six metres wide. How long it is, of course, will depend on what we want and need within space. So the length is not really an issue, but the width is. On that note, when you go to the very top up there, it's about nine metres wide. If we were to actually keep the footprint in this particular area, then the decking at the front and back would have to overhang. So it would overhang the bank here. And then, at this side, it would overhang the uh, rice field. And it would probably do so by about sort of two metres. So at this point we're assuming just the decking would overhang but not the actual footprint of the building itself. Obviously at this point um, we won't know exactly what we can and we cannot do without having a builder on site and let him sort of assess the uh, situation. Another question we got asked was regarding the uh, land title. Glenn Jones said, Subacore or real title on the land? I'm not really sure what you mean, Glenn. Um, each title, including the Subacore, is a real title. They just have different sort of meanings. For instance, Subacore is um, land that was given to uh, basically poor farmers um, in order that they may farm land to feed themselves. And it's designed so that it can be passed on to generation to generation. They're not technically allowed to sell it, although it does happen. You have other titles as well. For instance, North or Sam. Again, it allows you to do different things. The, the freehold title that everybody generally refers to is a chenote. And a chenote, you can pretty much do what you like with it. Uh, sell it, build on it, you know, whatever. So uh, yes, they're, they're, they're all genuine titles but they all have different meanings the issue is can you build on it there seems to be an attitude here with ties in the fact that well it's my land and I'll do what I like with it um, technically you're going to require planning permission uh, this I do know um, but my father-in-law said that uh, that won't be a problem he'll go and have a word with the um, Puyaban which is a village chief and then the Puyaban will have a word with the Orbitor and that'll be the end of it he'll, they'll probably get uh, building permission for it uh, there are lots and lots of structures here buildings that go up where planning permission is never really obtained again uh, they generally take the attitude it's my land and uh, I'll do what I like with it Technically it's illegal, but generally what happens is, from my understanding, that if they ever do sort of get caught up in the web of bureaucracy, what they do is they put in retrospective planning permission and they get it. And it's as simple as that. Uh, again, my father-in-law doesn't expect there'll be any problems uh, building a home on here, none whatsoever. Uh, the shack is a dwelling, it's a fixed dwelling, and nobody's ever said anything about that. And if you look around carefully just in there, this area alone, there's one, two, three little shacks over there, another one there, another one over the, behind the trees. There's lots and lots and lots of them wherever you look. And technically, all of them are fixed dwellings that uh, really require planning permission, but rarely, rarely do. The final question today is uh, regarding the location of the build. And this comes from uh, Brian Black. And he says, what about where the shack came from? Uh, is that spot available for a new structure? Well, as you can see, this is where the new shack sat. And um, yeah, it's not very wide. And of course, if you look at the trees and the root systems, uh, it wouldn't really be an ideal building plot. Because it's not very wide, it would then have to be extended out onto the roadway that leads into the farms, which would block that off. Not only would it block it off for Pi's uh, mum and dad, but it was also block it off for our neighbouring farmers who use this road to access their farm. On the other side, of course, just a few feet away, you have uh, the pond. So unfortunately, no, it's, it's not really viable. It's a shame, actually, because it's a beautiful area. It really is. I love all the trees here. You know, even if we did have sufficient land there, it would mean cutting down some of these trees, and I wouldn't really be keen on that either. I really like to see trees and plants growing, so, yeah, I'm not keen on cutting them down. Now, hindsight is a wonderful thing, as we all know. You know, if we, if we could only just turn that clock back, <laughs> you know, it would make life so much easier, wouldn't it? Now, one of the things that Pi and I were discussing uh, just the other day was uh, the old pond. 
I've said to you before guys that uh, where Fam's standing that used to be the end of the uh, old pond and of course uh, we excavated this area here uh, so that it could be extended that's what dad wanted at the time but in hindsight that would have made a perfect building plot it had been tucked in at the back right at the boundary line surrounded by all these trees it really would have been a, the perfect place yeah hindsight <laughs> but uh, you know it's what uh, happened at the time and uh, you know uh, we could actually fill it in I'm not sure my father-in-law would approve um, so it's unlikely he would agree to it but um, yeah it could be filled in but even if we did we're looking at tons of soil and then of course you're looking at years for that to settle to be stable enough to be able to put a structure on it there's plenty of land here uh, most of it is rectangular in shape you know once you get beyond the cow shed here so once you get to this point here on the cow shed it basically goes all the way up there of course it doesn't all belong to pie and a dad you know there's uh, m as well pie's brother so pie's brother has the uh, top uh, section of the farm he has three rye mum and dad have three rye and pie's been given three rye so yeah there's plenty of room here and uh, Pye really likes it because it does two things it overlooks the pond and uh, it overlooks the mountains it is a stunning stunning location if the worst comes to the worst and going back to uh, you know one of the questions regarding the width of the plot you know if it does come down to it then uh, Pye and I are sure that uh, her father will sort of give up just a little bit more in the uh, rice field here just to make sure that the building has adequate land to stand on so that's 10 questions i picked this morning and uh, i hope it sort of answered them uh, to your satisfaction i'm sure you guys have lots and lots of other questions trust me pie and i at this stage we have loads of questions there is so much we don't know about this and uh, yeah it's quite a learning curve but an enjoyable one and we'll see what happens over the next few months pie and i certainly don't want you guys getting the wrong impression in respect of the build um, don't expect uh, the build to sort of you know get underway within a couple of weeks and then uh, be completed within say 18 months again we're going to start off with just the bedroom and the bathroom to start with and then build on it as finances allow estimate it could be three to five years before we complete it so uh, yeah it's going to be quite a long journey again so much to consider and of course um, you know we have to take it step by step but we're very happy with what's going on right now and it's all sort of forward moving progress so no complaints at all and uh, yeah actually very very exciting but we'll see what happens over the the next couple of months i'll get these plans finished and then uh, we'll see about getting hold of a builder and uh, have a chat and see what they say now I've said to you guys before that Pye absolutely adores her gardening. She's uh, never happier than when she's planting something. And what she's doing right now, she's sort of clearing the area away. But she's being quite selective because if you look closely, there are all these tiny little yellow flowers. And they're really, really pretty. And Pye just loves them. They grow um, like a blanket, so they spread and uh, what she wants to do is just have a blanket of these get rid of all the weeds and let this take over Pine says it'll be nice when the house is built <laughs> come outside and see a sea of yellow and she's right it will look really really nice you're having a good time there aren't you <laughs> well guys we hope you enjoyed the uh, q a and it's answered some of your questions again so much more to cover yet and uh, just watch this space i guess and see how we get on over the next uh, few months Whatever you guys do, have a fantastic day and stay safe. Don't forget, please subscribe, share and like. It does make a difference. And Pi and I, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now, guys. See you tomorrow.